So give me the next 10 minutes and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your career budget so that you can advance your engineering career within robotics, automation, and AI. I just got off of a client call for mentorship. And one of the key things that I didn't realize that people need to know is their budget. So engineers, we take a ton of math classes, but not one of them talks about money. And I know sometimes people get a little cringy when we're talking about money, but to be honest with you, I think as a high income earner, somebody making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, it may be worth spending the next 20 or so minutes putting together a little budget so that you can figure out whether or not the move you're making is going to serve you in your career. Now, I spoke in other videos about market-based wages and how you can kind of strategize to amplify your earnings based on the market, based on the environment, based on your responsibilities, based on what you're actually doing. And so in this video, I'm going to actually pull up a spreadsheet and I'm going to show you mathematically the very simple calculation and research that you can do to figure out how much money you actually need, how to prepare for retirement, not a financial advisor, but how I would prepare for retirement, and then how I'd use this information to go out and find the right robotics jobs that are going to match my plan. So let's go ahead. We're going to hop right on to screen share. I'm going to show you exactly my process, and you can model after me if you agree with my philosophies and be good to go. So I just got a, uh, a Google sheet here that we're gonna use for modeling. And this is not complicated math here. This is not engineering math. What you wanna do is you want to build out a plan for your budget. So what I like to do is just put out all the expenses. So that might be your rent, your mortgage. That's gonna be your car. That might be, uh, your fuel, if you're commuting, you've got food, restaurants, you've got vacations, um, hobbies, um, savings, retirement, we'll put in insurance, and then I'll put in, let's say, buffer, so miscellaneous. So these are gonna be kind of your key areas that you're gonna to wanna to use. And this is napkin math, okay? So I wanted to design a very quick way that you can justify how much money you wanna be making. I get a lot of applicants into the mentorship program where they're, let's say they're making $100,000 a year and they tell me they wanna make $500,000 a year. It's like, okay, well, what are you trying to buy? Like, what are you trying to buy? Why do you need another $400,000? Where is that going? And then what are you actually doing? So what are your responsibilities in the company? Where are you living? And what skill sets are you using? So how do we figure out what actually makes sense and what's reasonable? I tell all my clients to do this. And if you're looking at different locations, you can even put the locations across here. So let's say you wanna live in New York City. Maybe you're looking at San Francisco. Maybe you're looking at Miami. If you're looking at Atlanta, like you may want to do this for all these lo locations. And if you've never done any sort of planning or anything like this before, you want to become literate at this. Like I know people don't like to, a lot of people, they don't like to talk about money, but like if you don't know what your numbers are, it's very difficult to go into a conversation with a hiring manager when they're presenting you an offer to know whether or not that's a good offer or not based on your needs. So if you go through, what, what I recommend doing is going on like Zillow or Redfin or apartments.com and figuring out, okay, well, what is the rough mon monthly cost for living in these areas? So we'll quickly do one right now. Let's just go to, uh, let's go to Zillow or let's just go to apartments.com. We'll go there. And I live in Fort Myers, but let's say I wanted to move to Miami. All right. So now we've got all these different options here in Miami and we can figure out like what part of Miami we want to be in. And I would just start filtering this out. So I want to be in at least a two bedroom home with two bathrooms. I don't care about what style home, any of that is fine. And then amenities, obviously want a washer and dryer, definitely air conditioning. Um, there needs to be parking, dishwasher, 
be good if it had a fitness center, a pool, like you can do all this. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so now we've got one result here. We've got a town home for $3,400. Okay, let's maybe bring this back up a little bit. Let's pull all this out. And then we've got, let's zoom out and see if we can get some more options. There can't just be one in Miami. Miami's a big place. All right, cool. So now we've got a whole bunch of them. So now we're looking at these ranges here. And we can see kind of the bottom end of the range, we're looking at like $3,000. So if I wanted this style of living in Miami, then I'm going to need to put $3,000 on my budget. So we're going to put $3,000, okay, for the type of home that I want. And what your numbers are, are totally up to you. Like what I want, and what you want can be totally different. But like the fact that nobody's teaching this and we take like four to eight years worth of advanced math and nobody's saying like this is how this is the napkin math that you need to do for a sanity check to advance your career to the next level is just mind-blowing to me um car so a lot of times people will come to me and they're they want to get a new car with this new job move they want they want a car okay well what kind of car are we looking at are we looking at a used car are we looking at a new car are we looking at a hyundai are we looking at a bmw like what you want, you need to put that in there. So like, let's say you want a BMW. Let's go to BMW. Let's see what it costs. Are we getting an entry level? Are we getting a, a fully loaded uh, SUV, you know, premium class? Like, what are we, what are we looking at? Are we looking at the, you know, $75,000 option? Or are we looking at the $40,000 option? And what you choose is completely up to you. Um, I always like to round up because I like to have room in my budget for um, the ability, the flexibility to make good choices. So that's going to be up to you what, what you want. Let's choose something kind of in the middle, like this X3, okay? So $49,000. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like for a car payment. Let's see. So let's look here in Fort Myers, what it would cost. So 40, 45, and then you got taxes, titles, fees, you're probably looking at like 50 out the door. 50, 55 out the door. That's probably what I would guess. Um, I would try to figure out, let's do BMW auto payment okay and then we can look at what the uh loan payments look like sometimes too i will look up like bmw lease um right here this is what i'm looking at lease and finance so you want to try to find this for whatever you're looking at because you're going to need these numbers, okay? Leasing at 559, 579. You know, if you want this purple one, it's going to be 739. So you got to kind of make um make the sheet so that you know, okay, cool. So if I'm looking at let's go back to that X3, I need to put in about $700 or so and then you've probably got down payments and this is a lease offer. What is the actual finance offer they're not telling you um that other one had a number but you you want to know this okay you want to be an informed person right because just because you make six figures or multiple six figures um that doesn't mean anything unless you understand where your money's going right so i would put let me see if we've got any actual numbers here so you've got a three percent finance rate here 3.99. I'm going to put on here $800. That's just what I'm going to do because I want to make this, I don't want to make this video too long. So we've got a car. We were looking at the BMW X3. We've probably got insurance with that car. So you're probably looking at another, I don't know, $300 in insurance, we'll call it. Um, miscellaneous. I will usually just add like another five to 10% just in case my numbers are wrong. Like I said, I want to have a good understanding. Fuel, this might be, I don't know, $50 a week. So we'll say $200. Food, um, let's call this, 
I don't know, $200 a week. So we'll call this $800. Restaurants, maybe you eat out once a week. So let's call this $400. So you, maybe you go out a couple times a week and you, you have nice meals. Maybe you're eating out once a day and it's like $15 a day. Um, so you can kind of factor that in here. Vacation. So do you take a vacation every single month? Probably not. But maybe you take one uh, three or four times a year. Maybe you go four times a year and each time it is about $3,000. So maybe it's $3,000 times four divided by 12. So you're looking at about $1,000 a month in vacation costs. Hobbies, do you play any sports? Do you go to sporting events? Do you go to the gym? Do you like reading? Do you like music? Um, streaming services, maybe we could put that in here as a separate one. Again, not a financial advisor. This is just what I do to make sure that the decisions that I'm making make sense. Um, so maybe you spend $100 a month on streaming services. Maybe you've got your cell phone and you've got internet. So maybe you spend $100 a month on internet. Maybe you spend $100 a month on your phone. Hobbies, maybe you have a $1,000 worth of hobbies that you're spending like, between sports and gym and that kind of stuff. Gym, sports, um, entertainment, if you go to concerts, um, things like that. Savings, maybe you have a personal goal of saving uh, $500 a month. In retirement, you can put whatever you want in here. Maybe again, you put $500 away for your retirement. So you're saving about $1,000 a month. Okay, cool. So now what we've got is a total. And we'll just take this, sum this up, and then we add 10%. Okay, so now we've got all of this. We're looking at our total monthly expenses for Miami, $9,680, okay? And like, obviously if you have a family, if you have kids, if you have other things in here that are part of your day, if you have a dog, if you have a pet, um, you're gonna wanna factor all this in here because um, it's really surprising to me when we get offers on the table and we see a number and we're like, we have an emotional reaction to the number and we have no context as to whether or not that even makes sense for, for what we're trying to do. Um, and so I want to set you up for success here. I would highly take some time. You see, I was able to drop this out napkin math here in about 10 minutes. And now we know monthly expenses, we can look at like annual expenses. We could look at this times 12, and this is your cost of living for this type of lifestyle. Now, granted, it's very simplified. I put in a 10% buffer um, right here. So like, if I don't think we put in like utilities, we didn't put in water, we didn't put in that kind of stuff. We didn't get into the details, but if you've got kind of this framework here and this roadmap, then now you, you're kind of building out the lifestyle that you want. And so when I work with clients in mentorship, we're really getting clear on this because if you don't know what you want, it's going to be really hard to get it. And if you don't know what, what you want and you don't know what, what you want costs, like if you don't know the cost of these things, then it's going to also be very difficult to get it because now what we can do is we can take this and we can say, okay, cool. What are you currently making now? What do you currently have now? What do you want to be making in robotics? What are your skill sets? What market are you in? What are you responsible for? You know, where are you living? Okay, cool. Now we're going to be looking at offers that meet this criteria. And we have kind of a range as to whether or not we're on target or we're not on target. Um, and so that's, that's kind of my process for how I like to do this. And I would do this for every city. So I'd be looking up um, these different Ge geographies, these different cities, and making sure that I have kind of an apples to apples comparison. And your list may look similar to this. It might be more extravagant. Maybe you have a line item on here for um, designer clothes because you're really into fashion and style. And that's where you like to put kind of your, your money towards. 
That's awesome. Put it on the list. Anything, anything that you want in your life, you have to kind of make those decisions because if you're not clear on that, it doesn't matter like where we put you in the robotics market. If you're not making what you need in that role to be happy with your life, then you're going to be frustrated. And so I have a lot of clients that come to me because they want to get this clear. They want to be really clear on what it is they're trying to go after. And so my high, my recommendation for you, if you're in this boat, if you haven't done this before, do this quick calculation and use this with your action plan. There's another video on how to do an action plan and how to find good robotics jobs. So how to figure out what skills to learn. And if you use all those videos on this robotics career playlist, I guarantee you, you're going to make some progress in your career if you're consistent over the next 90 days. So if you'd like my help setting up your action plan and have the clear trajectory into the robotics industry, you're an engineering professional, you want to work in robotics, automation, or AI, and have that expedited fast track with my feedback, then I invite you to check out the bonus training here in the description. This explains more about my philosophy, how I work with clients, and there are instructions on how you can apply to be considered for that program. And if you're not convinced that I'm the right person to help you, that's totally okay. Here are a couple of other videos you can check out. Obviously want to work with people who are looking to work with me. And if I can be that person that helps you get into the industry, make more money, monetize your skills, and improve what you're actually working on within the robotics market, I'd love to be that person for you. So thanks for taking time out of your busy day, and I'll see you in the next one.